Good morning, sunshine. That's all that's blasting me right now. I have to actually fight fire with fire. It's like this is the highest setting on this lamp, and somehow this is making less glare from the enormous amount of sunlight that is blasting through this window on me right now. So, you know, it's about 9, 19, I think. There's so much light in here, it's, I can't even read the LED clock. My alarm clock across the room. Um, but I'm here to make a short video, and it will be a short video. I know when I usually say that, there's a 50-50 chance that I'm lying. Uh, but, uh, no, this will be a short video. A couple of things that happened was I gave the $700 check uh, to my landlord, and as an experiment, and because I needed to do triage on the lesion on my leg from the CR... Why did I just touch it? And what... <laughs> Yeah, not the brightest <laughs> move. Um, I had to, I had to go. I, so I want to do this experiment and see if I could like shop. You know, I haven't done any of my own shopping in, like forever. I just buy everything over the computer that I can, and then um, occasionally uh, somebody will ask me if I need anything, and then I eat like Meals on Wheels meals mostly. And, um, you know, so I haven't been done my own shopping in like forever, or tried to walk around the store. So I was like, oh, I'll do that as an experiment and see what happens. Well, what happens was that I was carrying around a basket, getting my band-aids and my antiseptic and the other things that I needed and, um, some heavier stuff. And I'm almost falling all over the store. I mean, it was like touch and go a couple of times, whether I was just going to fall and there'd be just a big scene. So, uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to find out how bad I actually was because I haven't tried to do anything like that at all. And, uh, that was about 40 hours ago. My knee still hurts from doing that. So, you know, that's another thing that I don't know is like, should I walk on a blood clot? Should I not walk on a blood clot? And my, my knee is telling me right now, the answer is no, but it doesn't matter because I live alone and I have to walk. So it doesn't really matter that my knee hates being walked on. It's It's got to be. So, um, let me just forget all that. Cut to uh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, of course, I wake up in a large amount of pain because the day before is uh, when I was ambling around the... Uh, uh, dollar store picking up my medical supplies and uh, so I wake up call Medicaid get that squared away because you got to renew that and I like to hear an actual human voice to let me know because like uh, medical bills are more terrifying than 18 grizzly bears so I um, like to make sure that's squared away I like to hear a human voice say tell me I'm good to go for another year on that I got Medicaid, Medicare, combined coverage, whatever. Um, then I wait for my Tri-County Orthopedic Surgeon's Office to, to open, and I call them and I ask about my referral and when I'm going to have my surgery and when, what details they can give me about that. So here's what details they can give me about their two words, Cleveland Clinic. That's all. That's literally all they would tell me. It's going to be done at the Cleveland Clinic. They wouldn't tell me by who. They wouldn't tell me any details about what. And most importantly, they wouldn't tell me when. So I have no idea when. I'm just sitting around waiting for a call from a girl that might like me. I'm just sitting around waiting waiting by the phone, you know. And um, it's like I'll wait a few weeks, maybe a month, and then I'll call Cleveland Clinic and ask, you know, if I don't hear from them. I don't know if that's the best way to go about it. I know that it's the Cleveland Clinic. It's the largest hospital in the world, I think. Um, so that's ominous because it's like there's a million hospitals between where I live and the Cleveland Clinic. Why does it have to be done at the Cleveland Clinic? I want the so-called best, second best ho uh, hospital facility in the world next to uh, the Mayo Clinic. Um, 
you know, why does it have to be done there? I mean, I don't even know how serious this thing is that I was walking around in or how delicate the surgery is or I don't, that you know, there's nothing scarier than the unknown and there's nothing that's going to work on your anxiety more than the unknown. I got to start stop talking like this. Yeah, see, yeah. I noticed I got a, forming a habit of doing that. Just talk like a normal person with both sides of your face. You're not a stroke victim. Anyways, um, so I don't know what the deal is, but the Cleveland Clinic thing is like, there's a, it's bad and for two reasons. It's like they do serious surgeries there. That's a, that's a major hospital. The second reason it's bad is like, they have it's a huge hospital with a, and everybody goes there. And um, so I, it might be months until I get something done about this hideously painful knee. It might be months before I get operated on. I don't know. It's at least going to be a month. I can almost guarantee you that. Uh, but I don't know. And uh, she said, we, she's like apologetic and stuff. It says like, I don't know anything about it. It's like when we do our refer referrals for surgery. Um, to the the Cleveland Clinic, it's basically we just tell them that we got somebody that needs surgery, and then you know they call you. And so yeah, that's gonna be real fun with to work with uh, my my anxiety because I was explaining to somebody else there's anxiety, and then there's benzo uh, withdrawal anxiety, which uh, is regular anxiety pumped up full of steroids and human growth hormone with a Barry Bonds head and uh yeah so it's 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 gonna be fun it's means I'm gonna be I'm definitely not getting off of volume and I heard that news and I got in a really black mood yesterday like you know belly up to the bar and leave leave the bottle bartender type of mood you know like it's just like I got in a real foul mood and uh badly black hole of Calcutta depressed and uh, so I was like uh, I'm going to sleep so I'm just going to sleep I mean I can't I'm just going to sleep so I went ahead and went to sleep and I slept for a couple hours and uh, I woke up with a phone call somebody called me and woke me up and here it's my, my boat got sold for a thousand dollars now the plans that I had made was uh, for me to get that boat hauled over here and sell it for myself. But uh, before I thought of that, uh, I told uh, the person that was been storing the boat for me, the person that was supposed to be using the boat for me, or boat with me, I told that guy, you know, if you can find a buyer, you know, ask around or whatever. So he's got somebody that's hot to trot and told me he's got it sold for a thousand dollars this coming weekend and to get him off his ass to do that you know I said you'll get your cut so now basically I am paying someone for not being my friend uh, when I bought the boat with the guy uh, I said I'm plunking down the 1500 I said uh, you're gonna have to cover the expenses uh, for the license, because you have a license on the trailer and um, whatever else little incidentals were needed uh, to get the boat on the water. And um, I think we had to buy a part to it too, but I don't remember what that was. But it turned out to be a fair sum of money, around the $200 range. And uh, he just never would do it. He just wouldn't do it. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not in his head. I don't understand his reasoning for that. He loves, used to love to fish. Uh, I've fished with him thousands of times, you know. It should be like a dream come true for both of us since we both grew up dirt, dirt poor to have a boat, be able to use it, be able to go to all these exotic lakes when all we could do back in the day is go to some mud hole behind the palms, that bl bucket of blood bar that I talked about and fish next to a woods where probably bodies were buried in it, fishing next to the ghosts. I thought about that, how many times we walked in that woods, like if I believed in ghosts, and then, you know, 
but you'll have to connect that to another video if you're uh, following along with the story but that bar was a bad bar lots of bad things went down in there and local legend has it that the woods behind there that we used to walk around in and hunt fish and frogs in and there was ponds close by where we would fish uh, he said there's bodies buried back there so maybe we were walking through them woods with ghosts I don't know I got lost in those woods before but I told that story elsewhere and uh, anyways uh, so yeah we used to fish in this like worst place you could imagine we were just so dirt poor and when we were growing up as kids and just catch carp which is considered a garbage fish around here and like in Europe it's considered a game fish um, for whatever reason and they they fish for them deliberately but very few people fish for carp deliberately around here they just don't do it it's not considered a good food fish and uh, you know people they actually have barrels placed on besides ponds that say place unwanted carp in here where you're just supposed to throw them away like garbage that's what we were fishing for which we it's like that's just a horrible thing you know the, the idea that place unwanted carp in here and there'd be a garbage barrel you know I never threw a carp in there we spent all our time fishing for carp so that boat thing should have been a dream so basically uh, he reneged on his promise about putting in the extra couple of dollars to get the boat on the water and finally I'm the, I, I like I want that boat on the water it's been a couple of years and I had a reason for that I'm not going into and um, so I paid more money to get the boat on the water and let him uh, renege on his promise that he didn't keep and then he made another promise to me about the boat that he didn't keep and then he moved the boat onto the neighbor's property which he told me after the fact that he did that he's like oh yeah I moved it you know it's like you're not gonna ask me to move a fifteen hundred dollar piece of my property you're not even gonna consult me about it you know um, so now because I told the guy you know you'll get your cut I gotta pay him for uh, breaking promises to me not going fishing with me and being a bad friend um, so yeah that's what I woke up to when I was already in the uh, black hole of Calcutta mo mood is t the death of a dream because that was a dream we had when we were kids you know we'd have a boat and go fishing and do all that stuff some reason that dream died in him and uh, for the time being it's dead in me I mean I can't walk around I mean maybe someday I can I'll have enough money and buy another boat maybe things will change but we're all old men now you know and he's he's got all white hair and what's left of it and as you can see I got white in my beard so I, I don't understand I've, I don't understand it but yeah that's really gonna be fun handing over that I'm gonna give him a 10 percent commission out of the thousand dollars he's probably gonna show up here with a thousand dollars hand me a thousand dollars I'll be like here's your 10 percent um, um, commission for uh, selling it for me and uh, as far as storage fees I should be paying his neighbor the, for the storage fees because it was parked in his neighbor's yard for the last three or four years um, that's why this all was coming to his head to a head is because he's got no place to put it and his neighbor is moving you know which I already talked about before so yeah that was not a good day yesterday so once I found out about the boat thing and that I was gonna have to pay somebody to not be my friend or and, and for being a bad friend and breaking promises um, I decided I'd never do that but I took um, gabapentin and mixed it with uh, just 10 milligrams of volume which is enough in the middle of the day I was belly up to the bar man just leave the bottle bartender type of mood and uh, I ended up calling somebody and I'm like I'm more or less drunk dialing and I was like Psh, I was some kind of weird kind of high and uh, it, it, don't, it didn't last very long it lasted for like a hour for an hour man I was pretty out there um, but yeah so you know there's always more that I could talk about because my situation is so damn complicated 
But basically now I have to figure out how in this ridiculous situation I'm in with the CRPS, got a new lesion on my leg, which hurt like a bastard. And uh, it's not even that big and it hurts like a bastard. Um, living in the, in this room, you know, and not really having trustworthy people in my life. And I have to figure out how to do that and wait to have surgery where I don't know if it's going to be successful or not or what the rehab is going to be like. I don't know anything about it. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to walk right ever again. It's like, how am I going to do that? You know, how? I don't know how. I don't know. I have to figure it out. Um, I have to work out some way to do some cardio, though, because you cannot lay in bed and let your circulatory system rot. It's actually bad for you not moving around, like it's sitting. I think I, there was a guy that was a reporter in Iraq that actually died from that where he had an embolism or something in his leg, and they said it was mainly because he was just sitting in planes and sitting in planes all the time and wasn't moving around or walking or moving his legs. So I have to figure out some kind of exercise program where I can do some cardio for my heart and for my circulatory system because my heart's definitely going to get worse and my anxiety is going to get worse unless I can figure out some kind of uh, physical activity that I can do. I just can't be laying in bed all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, lifting weights is not considered a cardio type of exercise. And, um, like, uh, because you, your heart spikes when you're lifting the weights, and then you rest between sets and then you pick up the weights again. You're, you got an up and down thing. You want to keep your heart pumping, boom, 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 like on a treadmill, like running, jogging, whatever. That's like more like cardio stuff, but it's something. I mean, if I use light weight and, uh, you know, do it like a circuit training, they call it, I guess, where you just keep going, um, keep the heart rate up. Uh, maybe I can get my cardio in that way. As far as what I can do with my legs to keep my circulation going when my knee is like a screaming vortex of horror, <laughs> right? I don't fucking know what to do about that. I don't even know if it's a good idea to be walking on the blood clot. I got I don't know. Anyways, is what what a cardiologist would tell me. I've actually had one um a nurse, I think a cardiac nurse or someone shake their head at me when they said I said I had my first uh uh bout of arrhythmia while I was lifting uh 38 pounds dumbbells. And they shook their head at me like, you know, why would you do that? That was dumb. That was foolish. Well, you know what? To them, I got to be me. I have to be me. I can't pay no one else to be me. And no one wants to be me. So I has to be me. <laughs> I got to do me, man. And, uh, yeah, I have to do stuff to elevate my mood. And um, that's one of the things I've always done is... Uh, lift weights ever since I was 15 years old whenever I could um, whenever I was able to and uh, yeah I'd like to hire somebody to be me right about now just for a while I can just like sit over in the corner and you know you know like a drug trial where you're like uh, here you can be a guinea pig and try this it might have this side effect or that side effect that you might feel sick from it or or whatever, you know, just let somebody else, I'll just, I'll just sit over in the corner and just be a, a ghostly apparition, uh, watching myself, watching somebody else pilot this ruined vessel and feel these sensations every day. But yeah, anyways, getting off the volume is a no-no, like right now. So um, I'm still taking less than I'm prescribed, and I'll take as much as I need to take, but I'm still gonna try to take as little as, of that as possible i haven't taken anything of it yet today the last time i took one was uh um yeah yesterday with the gabapentin that was around noonish so i'm not taking very much of that stuff anyway i want to keep the volume at a jumping off point in case 
the knee surgery surgery is an actual success and I can walk regular and stuff. I don't want to hike the volume up just because I'm going through a hyper stressful time yet again. And then, you know, it, it'd be harder to get off of. I want to keep it, at, I keep a nice jumping off point, we'll call it, to where it's, um, I'm not taking that much. So, you know, unfortunately for me, the uh, first video that I made, I did not make sure the red light was on the microphone. And, uh, yeah, I said something funny in there that was a reference to uh, the the uh, dystopian nov novel A Brave New World <laughs> about me being a, a semi-epsilon moron or something like that because they, they would genetically engineer people, you know, and they're like, well, these are the, we're going to create a class of idiot level non-smart people you know and I was calling myself one of them uh, for one reason or another um, but this was this is my third try at making the video the first try I didn't have the light on on the you know it was on mute and I didn't understand that and then the second try I just kind of like fucked it up at the beginning but at the beginning I made that joke about you know me since I'm a semi epsilon moron <laughs> or whatever it was from that Aldous Huxley novel uh yeah I'm being self indulgent now <laughs> that's for sure uh but yeah that was <laughs> see I used to be used to be able to do clever shit like that like call something up like that from memory but that's uh pre benzo days so that's you know I could look that up on the internet and research it but what the fun is that you know to have that spontaneously spring to your mind is why I read all those books and uh, developed my mind is the, f the fun of that, you know, the fun of connecting all those dots and having those things uh, things pop into your mind and, and weaving them all together and uh, making an interesting tapestry for somebody else to hang on their wall and look at. And uh, what, what this, I wouldn't bother hanging this tapestry on your wall to look at, but you could listen to it. And be like, well, this guy's seriously got some things to go through. Some more things, it seems like. I, imagine waiting for a surgery and you know it's like, oh, it's going to be May 15th. I've done that before. That's rough. Now imagine waiting for a surgery. You have no idea what the date to that surgery is going to be. You don't really know anything about the surgery. You don't know you know, and it's like, I'm not going to bust my ass, at least for the first month, I'm not going to bust my ass making a bunch of calls, trying to get through automated systems at the Cleveland Clinic to try to find information about my case. I'm just going to have to be passive, and being passive, as was what, what I was trying to tell my friend with the anxiety issues, is, is like the most stressful thing to be, is to be passive. My dad used to have this expression, do something even if it's wrong, that, uh, you know, because he was not a patient person. And uh, there's some truth to that in a way, because it's like uh, doing nothing very, is a very stressful way to go. And like, like if I just have to sit here and do nothing and wait, you know, I'm just kind of laughing at the... Uh, you know, how much worse is this going to get for me? Uh, but yeah, yesterday, I was like, the, like I said, man, it's a black, the black hole of Calcutta of despair, man. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. Um, and then, like, uh, I got the whole death of a dream thing. Phone call where, like, uh, the boat that, when I had moved to this city, I was figured that we would be out on. Uh, fishing that I've never went out on it not once you know and then have it. then paying a guy probably within five days paying a guy for not being my friend because um, you know if he was my friend we would be out on that boat uh, fishing together but I don't understand people and I'm not going to ever pretend to understand. I'm never ever going to pretend to understand another human soul as long as I live. I mean, 
Um, never. There's no place to end this, and it has, I guess, 25 minutes is short for me. So, yeah, I guess this was a short video. Hopefully it didn't suck. I always hate that. It's like, I bet you those other videos where I, it was muted were better. Or uh, the other video started out better, at least in this video. Uh, maybe turned out. Maybe, I don't know. That's why I just like to do the one take. Anyways, um, yeah, you won't be hearing from me, from me for about a week or so. I have to figure out. Um, how to cope with this new situation and uh, figure out some kind of exercise regimen to uh, I guess keep my strength up for whatever it is I have to go through at the Cleveland Clinic at the hands of whoever it is I have to go through whenever I have to go through it so um, see you in a week goodbye